Hi, my name is Dr. Miriam Delphin Rittman, and I'm the Assistant Secretary for Mental Health and Substance Use in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the leader of the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. We are so excited about our first ever Recovery Innovation Challenge and appreciate the overwhelming level of interest. We are thrilled that we received more than 350 submissions from peer-run and community-based organizations across the country, all of which align in one way or another with our pillars of recovery, health, home, community, and purpose. SAMHSA has a long and rich history of advancing recovery dating back to the 80s, and the Recovery Innovation Challenge is the next exciting step in our journey. By seeking innovations that advance recovery, we'll gain a better understanding of how the field has evolved over the past decade to advance recovery throughout the continuum of care. Our challenge winners exemplify amazing and innovative work that supports the process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live self-directed lives, and strive to reach their full potential. Congratulations to all of our winners on their inspiring work which advances recovery and will improve SAMHSA's programs and policies moving forward. The 2022 winners of the SAMHSA Recovery Innovation Challenge. The Women's Home. I burned a lot of bridges in my addiction and nobody wanted to have anything to do with me. When I came to the women's home, I remember walking in to this beautiful facility and I just was like, oh my goodness, this is where I get to live? The women's home taught me so much. They helped me with my vocational training because I remember thinking, nobody is gonna hire me. Now I, I manage a staffing agency and I'm able to help other men and women find jobs. Seattle Indian Health Board. It's our cultural practices that promote the best healing. We kind of looked at the strengths of this organization that had already been in existence for 45 years, and we knew that we had to center every single thing that we do on culture. We do blessings and cultural assessments, talking circles, drumming circle, and sweat lodge. We also have a tremendous array of plant medicines. Nevada Caring Contacts. This whole program would have helped me if I had made it, like, supported me with an attempt by knowing that I had someone out there to listen, to understand, and that isn't going to panic when I tell them that I feel suicidal and that I want to make an attempt. I definitely think that it would prevent the multiple attempts that I had in the past if I had gotten that help after the first one. D. Wood Foundation. My ability to live a successful and self-directed life is the result of the success found in non-traditional and traditional medical and mental health supports. I take the inspiration, the power, and the knowledge that I received throughout my recovery and pay it forward by creating and encouraging the evolution of the Foundation's peer support near age programs. Maternity Care Coalition Michelle used heroin throughout her pregnancy before delivering her first child, Mila. After giving birth, she was informed that she would need to enter a mommy and me rehab in order to maintain custody, so she admitted herself into a program where she started methadone maintenance. They referred her to MRE, which is when I started working with her. Around the same time, her partner Eric was released from prison. He is also in recovery, so I began working with him as well. Chainless change. What makes us unique, though, from a lot of people working in the nonprofit spaces, particularly um, recovery community organizations, though, is that we have real peer specialists, right? Justice involved people with criminal arrest records, whereas in normal 
um, recovery communities or places that provide peer services, we are able to be hired. Voices of Hope. We wrote a grant to put a mobile unit on the ground, which dispatches to locations where people who use drugs frequent. And we provide meaningful access to the things that people need. In many cases, that's meeting basic needs because we recognize that equitable access to basic needs is recovery capital, is harm reduction, and is recovery. Progress House. Under one roof, our residents receive primary medical care, behavioral health therapy, care support such as recovery coaches, medication-assisted treatment, life skills education and job training, all in a recovery house and social model. Hushabai Nursery. I had support um, from people who have been through similar situations in their own lives, so that helped me, um, you know, feel more at ease, and I also felt hopeful knowing that I had a chance to be able to be a parent to my child even though I was on method. Center for Alternative Sentencing and Employment Services and New York Justice Peer Initiative. When I entered into the criminal justice system, I was addicted to drugs. I was suffering from a mental illness. My purpose today is to infuse recovery into that system. I am doing that by building community. I'm creating relationships and networks between those who are directly impacted and those who are formerly impacted. That is a justice peer. Congratulations to our winners. For more information, please visit samsa.gov slash recovery challenge. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.